Thanks for coming in today, Joan. We've been working together for the past year or so, but just starting off, like reflecting with your time, working with us here at Stride, what are some, some of the biggest insights that you've gained? Some of the biggest insights I've had really were related to just the idea of uh, threshold work in general. You know, I had been pretty intrigued about trying true threshold work with my team since uh, I know most of my guys are pretty strength oriented. Um, and I wanted to be able to dial their efforts in more correctly. Um, so doing the testing was, was very insightful. Do you feel like it was hard to get like their values right during workouts? Like was it kind of touch and go in terms of like where the values were in the morning versus the evening or anything like that? Well, bef before we did the testing, um, there's, th there's this sort of myth, I think, around Boulder that um, all the pro runners need to, to be running about five minute pace on a lot of things. Sure. They all seem to think that's their threshold pace, give or take a little bit. Be included, yeah. uh -huh, everybody, it's like, <laughs> it's like this little weird rumor. Yeah. And um, so we did spend a lot of time right around five minute pace. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think the thing I found, one of the things I found really in intriguing was after testing, realizing the range that there is between athletes and sure. athletes with similar performances, sure. you know, might have very different um, threshold ranges. Um, the other really insightful thing for me, uh, having read quite a bit about, you know, lactate testing and doing double threshold workouts and, and such was a lot of people just talk about having the range be around three to four millimoles. And I didn't realize until we did the testing how much that can really vary from one athlete to another. Um, there are athletes that, yeah, that's pretty much true for, and then there's others that need to, to keep their lactate levels lower. Yeah. So it's kind of shooting in the dark if you don't really have uh, the data. Um, an athlete's VO2 max is the size of the tank. Yeah. And the, the idea is to raise the level of the gas in the tank, which means they're performing at a higher percentage of their VO2 max at threshold pace. Yeah. Um, that, that was super helpful because I, I learned that there are athletes with wildly varying performance levels with very similar VO2 maxes that might not even be um, you know, what you think is a great VO2 max. And they could vary by, you know, a minute in performance in a 5K or even more. Um, so there are other factors that feed into uh, the, the performance. Um, so that was, that was really helpful to realize we could be pushing up, you know, say somebody has a smaller gas tank, but if they can function at a very high level, uh, percentage of that VO2 max, they're going to run well. It's one way to improve. Yeah, the house analogy was was very useful too in, in the sense that um, I, I realized we could raise the floor of my athlete's uh, performance, which would correlate to LT1, um, as well as pushing up the LT2, which would be the ceiling, not the roof, but the ceiling. And that helped me really realize, especially when we had one athlete that, that did actually raise the floor and um, the ceiling as well. Right, and that, that's kind of like one of the things that we identified that I think was insightful was like, maybe, you know, we were doing some of the threshold stuff a little too, too slow mm -hmm. because the floor was coming up mm -hmm. or the velocity at which you were doing LT1 mm -hmm. was coming up, but the ceiling wasn't necessarily raising like that LT2 ceiling. And that's kind of where I think the art of using the technology with, with your coaching intuition and some encouragement from you, since I tend to be a little bit conservative sometimes in my training, was to really push those paces that are uh, at LT2 a little bit um, and ride at the high end of their lactate levels and their paces. And that's been very useful. Uh, we, I've seen my, my marathoner, you know, Reed has improved a lot as we've started pushing those faster paces when we're doing threshold training instead of sticking a little, a little too slow. <laughs> You talk about like these these insights that we we've gotten over the past year. Um, did any of these findings challenge or reinforce your existing beliefs um, about coaching or running mechanics? I would say uh, it reinforced my beliefs of the need for us to 
really focus our training at the right, right paces. With Reed particularly, uh, it challenged me to, like I said, uh, push him harder in training. As far as the, the running mechanics go, it was, it was interesting to see how little issues that athletes were having, like little niggles. None of my athletes have had injuries, in, or bad injuries in a long time, but when they get little things, it, and it correlated with the time of the testing that we did in the lab, the, the stride pods really showed the imbalances uh, in, their, in their stride, especially at certain paces. We definitely, I, I definitely saw the impact of fatigue in, during the testing with both the lactate levels and the, the data from the stride pod. Could you share a specific moment, uh, whether in testing or training, where strides data had led to a, a breakthrough for you or one of your athletes? Yeah, I, I, I would come back to Reed as far as having a major breakthrough with uh, our training and just how we approached uh, his last um, marathon and half marathon work that we've been doing. Um, realizing that his threshold range was really much faster than we thought it was um, has sort of given both Reed and myself the freedom to push him down into uh, the faster end of his, his range, which um, has really paid off. I mean, he had a big half marathon uh, PR at Houston, and he's uh, just feeling really sharp and good, and, is, and uh, we hope to see some uh, uh, improvement at Boston as well. Um, I think his confidence has really grown, knowing that he's able to run workouts at these faster paces, and, um, and he's staying healthy, and it's, it's just super encouraging to both of us. It's not gonna change who you are as a coach, necessarily. It's just, a, it's a tool to improve you as a coach, even if you are one of those, you know, old school intuitive uh, people. Why not explore what it has to offer? It, yeah. it may, you know, make a, a big difference with one or all of your athletes. If your training philosophy is matching with what the data is showing about each individual athlete. Um, I think most coaches have athletes that puzzle them in one way or another. There's something that you just haven't quite figured out with that athlete, whether it's an athlete that's getting injured all the time or um, it has, carries a lot of fatigue, um, you know, or isn't happy maybe with some of the training they're doing. They, they don't enjoy certain types of training that you think they might need. And I, I feel like if you do the uh, testing and look at the data, you're gonna have more insight into things you can do to help uh, each of those individual athletes improve that puzzling parameter that you haven't figured out.